So just over two weeks ago now, it was announced that Netflix will produce a Witcher TV series. Now, uh, I'm, ju I'm just a casual fan. But regardless, when I see something like this, I just think, Please don't fuck it up. And I thought to myself, I really want to hear what others might think as well regarding the Witcher TV series and see if I'm not alone in my opinion or if you don't agree or if we don't agree to spark some discussion. So here we go, my opinion on how to make The Witcher Netflix TV series awesome. Part 1, make it for adults. One of the many things I love about The Witcherverse, yep that's what I'm calling it, is that a medieval fantasy story has verged away from the Tolkien-esque carbon copies we see everywhere of the hero's journey. I mean, we have some gems every now and then, such as Warcraft, to be fair. But the world of The Witcher, in my opinion, is dark, yet humanist. The plots in the novels, as well as the game, are written to explore that moral grey area of our humanity, which I feel a lot of medieval fantasy either just glazes over, or when it is attempted, they wildly miss the point of it. So, let's keep it that way. Don't stray from the source material. Keep it grounded like a meat pie in the carpet. Yep, that's an image you won't get out of your head soon. The Witcher doesn't stray from sensitive issues either. Ranging from post-traumatic stress disorder in Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, you know, the, the Bloody Baron quest, and the lives of a few for the many in the Last Wish novel. This world is perfect for that raw, mature storytelling in a dark fantasy world, without it coming off as too try-hard or trying to come across as just, uh, super edgy. So to that end, don't water it down either. This is quite contentious to say considering the debacles you see every now and then in the news about the availability of mature content for children within a few button clicks. But I don't want to talk about that. that. That's not what I'm talking about here. I think if the stories that Witcher has delved into were to be compromised for easier viewing, um, it would not do well, it would fall flat. Speaking of easy viewing, it would be great to see the TV series stick to that dry humour of the books, as well as the games of The Witcher. If we look back on the success of Game of Thrones and similar series, shows that embrace humour behind the drama and action create well-rounded entertainment. If any of you watching are familiar with the books, you know that Geralt is actually quite sassy, uh, even more than he is depicted in the games. I think we'll get a version a lot more like the books, if the creator has a lot of input in the creative process, as it's inferred in certain sources. But we can only speculate at this point. If The Witcher is to create as much of a following as the games did, it would need to stick to its guns and integrity and remember the sort of stories it can tell. Part 2. Keep it Polish. The Witcher is a breath of fresh air in the medieval fantasy genre with its Slavic influences by author Andrzej Szapkowski. Pretty sure I said that right. Um, if I didn't, you know, let me know. To this, I say if you want to keep Witcher close to its source material, be that Slavic folklore or Polish cultural influences, keep it Polish, guys. As a side note, I would even love to see some filming done in Slavic countries like Poland or Bulgaria. And I think the people involved with the series know this too, seeing as Polish media production company Platige Image, I think? Platige Image? I, I, I don't know. Um, who have been involved with creating the cinematic TV spots for The Witcher games are involved with the TV series for Netflix, along with executive producers Sean Daniel and Jason Brown, who worked on The Expanse. The writer of The Witcher series, Polish author Andrzej Szapkowski, is to be involved as well. There's some contention with his attitude toward The Witcher games. It's kind of inferred that the writer hates the games, when in fact, my interpretation of it is that he regards The Witcher games as an alternative iteration of his works. He doesn't hate them. It's been said that he won't play the games because he has better things to do, quote. And people may have seen that as snobbery, but I don't see it like snobbery at all. I, I, come on, the guy's retired and probably does have better things to do than to play the video games of The Witcher simply because he's been told to or been recommended to. He even mentions how the changes in the story were discussed to him prior and that he appreciates the changes and it's, quote, much more interesting than blindly following a pre-established plot. 
I think he's excited more for the TV series than the games because they've asked him to be involved with the creative process. And I think, if you're the author of a series of books, a guy comes to you and goes, we want to use your idea, but we don't want you involved. Yeah, you'd be, you'd feel a bit, okay, that sucks. But if someone comes to you and goes, hey, we're making a TV series based on your books and we want you involved, man, you'd be stoked. I mean, I would. I think with his involvement, the TV series will better show the Slavic influences as opposed to the Nordic, Anglo-Saxon, and Christian influences of a typical medieval fantasy world. The Witcher takes on a more humanist approach to its pathos and storytelling, and it should stick with that. In my opinion, the producers should too, to keep it close to its source material. Part 3. Get Geralt Right don't worry, I'm not going to start a list or anything about who should be who or anything like that. But I would like to talk about who might be good for Geralt. I think this is a very important choice, because the characters who accompany Geralt change rather consistently in the books rather than the games. I mean, in the games we can go visit them at any time, but in the books there are transitions between different times of his life, like in the Last Wish novel. If the Last Wish novel is followed for any of the structure in the episodes, then a series of flashbacks will be seen, in which we'll be exposed to Dandelion, Yennefer, and Nenike. Maybe one appearance between several episodes. Geralt is going to be the main attraction as a result. He's going to be the main focal point for the audience. Game of Thrones has the strength in moving in an omnipotent fashion between a range of characters, while we experience the world of The Witcher through Geralt only. The character of Geralt is an odd one too. He's stripped of emotions, but still resonates at some emotional frequency with us, but is innately monotone and somber. So in my opinion, it would be a challenge for an unknown actor to embrace such a role. I've seen suggestions of Nic uh, uh, Nikolai Costa uh, Waldo, you know, Jamie Lannister, or Mads Mikkelsen from movies like Star Wars, Rogue One, and Doctor Strange. And fine enough, they're both Danish, which, well, that was news to me. Uh, while I think these actors have their merits, it all comes down to the producers and what they want to go with, and because I'm not going to pretend I know how it all works, but I'm sure there's a lot more going on behind the scenes to pick actors rather than just like, yeah, he looks like him, let's pick him. Which kind of segues nicely into my next and last point. Part 4, The Concerns. As mentioned, the Polish company, the Polish production company Partige Image, which I'm pretty sure that's, that's their name, is taking the reins on the production of the Witcher TV series for Netflix. From their portfolio, it seems they do a lot of cinematics for video games, like really good ones, uh, commercials and movie shorts that are on average 12 minutes long. Um, I watched a few and, well, I, I, I'm actually going to leave a link in the description. They're pretty awesome. Go check them out. But not much else, to my knowledge at least. Uh, now it seems that they do have the capabilities to create great looking monsters in CGI, create believable visual effects, and they and they certainly know the way around the camera, but I'm concerned that for a continuing Netflix series, will they be able to create top-notch, top eye-catching 40-minute episodes, which I'm assuming, and then assuming that there's 12 of them per season? I mean, this sounds really negative, and I hope I'm not coming across as too negative, I'm just addressing a potential concern, I, I, as, as far as I see it. I um, hope I'm not coming across as like, I have no confidence in these guys. Like if tomorrow I heard um, how much they're getting funded or how much production value will be going into the show by Netflix, then my concerns will dissipate and I'll, I don't know, well, I'll just prepare my body for another binging of another Netflix series among many others. The only other concern I have is the fragmented audience, um, by which I mean, we have different types of audiences that will be approaching this TV series, and I think keeping that in mind will help creators um, cr tailor-make what will please all of the audiences. Because uh, although I said keep it for adults and it seems like a very um, isolative sort of approach, you do want to make, you don't want to create diversity in your audience, you don't want to, do, you don't want to divide them on opinions. So I think if they included the audiences, which would be people who have read the books, but haven't played the games. People like me, who have read the books and played the games. And then you have the people who have played the games, but not the books. And then you have people who just are watching Netflix, and they're like, hey, this show looks interesting. And you want to catch their attention too, you don't want to make them 
feel as if uh, they're watching something and they're just like, what is this? What is going on? I mean, it's not- it's only a minor concern, and I'm pretty sure we'll have no major influence on how the show is made. But it's something to- to keep in mind. If you like Witcher, you're probably gonna watch the show, in my opinion, anyway. But I think it's also what you ex it's the expectations of the audience. If someone that's played the games goes to watch this and just goes, Whoa, this, this is really different, and you characters look different even though, I don't know, I think character changes in terms of physical appearance and whatnot shouldn't be a t too much of an issue, but it is for some and that's perfectly reasonable. But I think, I think people should avoid getting on the hype train. I think people should approach it as its own work and what you expect might not be what you get, depending on what sort of background you have as an audience, and it could create some disappointment for some, so it is an issue to, you know, keep in mind. But at the end of the day, just don't get on the hype train. Just be keen that the awesome world of The Witcher is moving from the video games, from the books, and is now jumping onto Netflix. And on that, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you later. Thanks for watching my first opinion video. It means a lot to me. Like, comment, subscribe. Do all that lovely stuff down below. Let me know what you think of the upcoming Witcher TV series. I'm actually really eager to know. And stuff. Share this video with your mates. See you later.